let me welcome all of us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to today's platform. There just be some little change in uh, network and link. You're welcome in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we entrust into your hand this session with every confidence that you are with us and with gratitude that is well through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Galatians chapter 2 is expected to be done in two slots on the same theme, and that theme is simply just the saint's humble diary. And I'll just quickly go through the 21 verses for the benefit of those who will benefit from being refreshed. Then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along with me. I went up by revelation, I laid before them, not privately, before those who are of repute, the gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, lest somehow I should be running or had run in vain. But even Titus, who was with me, was not compelled to be circumcised, though he was a Greek. But because of false brethren secretly brought in, who slip in to spy our freedom, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage to them, we did not yield submission even for a moment that the truth of the gospel might not be, that the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you. And from those who were of repute to be something, but, they were, but that makes nothing to me. God knows, God knows no partiality. Those I say who were of repute had nothing to me. But on the contrary, when they saw that I had been trusted with the gospel, of a circumcision, just as Peter had been entrusted with the gospel of circumcised. For those who walked through Peter, for the mission to the circumcised walked through me, also for the Gentiles. And when they perceived that the grace of that the grace that was given to me, James and Cephas and John, who were of repu, who were to be pillars, gave me gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that they should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. Only they would have us remind, remember the poor, which very thing I was eager to do. But when Kephas came to Antioch, I posed him to his face because his school stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, he ate with the Gentiles. But when they came, he drew back and separated himself, fearing the circumcision party. And with him, the rest of the Jews acted insincerely. So that even Barnabas was carried away by their insincerity. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Kephas before them all, if you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you compel the Gentiles to live like the Jews? We ourselves who are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners, yes, know that a man is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law, because by works of the law shall no man be justified. But if in our endeavor to be justified in Christ, we ourselves were found to be sinners, is Christ then an agent of sin? Certainly not. But if I build up again those things which I tore down, then I prove myself a transgressor. For I through the Lord died to the law, that I may live to God, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live by in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for it's, if justification were through the law, then Christ died to no purpose. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The saints humble diary. We're talking about weaknesses of men of God. A saint is a true believer in Christ Jesus, made holy by the blood of Christ, which cleanses us from all sins. That's the word. When Ephesians 1 was written, it was written to the saints who are also faithful. But we are talking about our humble diary, our record, our daily records of how low, of how abased, of how degraded, of how modest and unpretentiously below the standard we are. And those are not the things that many people want to hear. 
by way of introduction. Paul had been humbled by the circumcision party's claim of superiority, big English. When the Pharisees believed, then problems started. They used to be wonderful people. They arose up certain of the sects of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to be circumcised and to command the Gentiles to keep the law of Moses. When a big man, when a priest, when a bishop becomes born again, he will want to impose on you what he thinks will be right. That was Paul's problem. So even when Peter went up to Jerusalem, this set of people, they criticized him. When a big man comes to the church, he wants to bend the rule and set it all around. And how we handle it is a problem of our discussion at those moments. So Paul's defense of the gospel of Christ started from as if he was to be boasting because he said, it's not expedient for me, but I will I will even come to visions. A lot of his calling were based on direct visions. And when you are saying what is right, and there are very many, it will be likely a boast. So it looked like a boasting. And when he was writing to Corinthians in chapter 12, he said, I've been a fool. You forced me to it for I to have been commended by you. I was not at all inferior to those superlative apostles. So he started blowing his trumpet. It's a weakness. When a leader has to now stand up and give him his profile, he can amount to weakness. So we are talking about the humble diary of the saints. And he told them, it was even because of a revelation that I went up. He was from Antioch. He went to Jerusalem. I now submitted to them the gospel that he had been preaching among the Gentiles. After conversion, he was submitted. He had been away for 14 years. But I did so in private to those who were of reputation for fear that I might have been running or had run in vain. He now wanted to say this is what Jesus, he went to the 12 from Antioch. You can see that, that map to Jerusalem. More or less, he went for a self-accreditation because God gave him a revelation, go. So about revelation, he was, you know, he even, you know, you know that when he was to have gone to Mysia, when he, he got to there, God said, don't go that way. Come to Macedonia and help us. So Paul's ministry was based on direct revelation by the Holy Spirit and Jesus. But then strength can become weakness sometimes. His boasts even talked about the equality of Christian standard. What I've just read to you in verse 6, he said, but as for the highly esteemed, whatever they were makes no difference to me. God does not show favoritism. Those leaders added nothing to me. After 14 years of his conversion, he now went to the headquarters to the first pope, and he found they were messing up. What are we saying? He referred them to equality of Christian standards. Let everybody remain in this condition in which he was called. If you are a laborer, be a Christian laborer. You can become an organ tomorrow. But he was saying what you are has nothing to do. Were you a bond servant when called? Don't be concerned about it. But if you can gain your freedom, avail yourself the opportunity. When he was to write these epistles, all the Peters could do is that we were with him. So it is difficult to correct a big man, you know, especially when the big man is wrong. So Paul's defense almost became a standard of equality. But to the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel of the uncircumcised, for the uncircumcised, even as Peter with the gospel of circumcision, what did he say? Recognizing the grace that had been given to me, the pillars, James, Peter, and John, who were reputed to be pillars, gave me and Barnabas the right out of fellowship. You can see the clapping of hands. Okay, we can not see anything wrong. You're doing very well. So his boasting almost became a weakness. Because when you see two giants fighting in the public, I mean, you can now see the way he was pointing at Peter. He went by revelation. You don't need to show on the face of Peter with all his white hair, he was looking, he was looking guilty. Paul proceeded to Peter into his face. When Kephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face. 
because it's too condemned. Church politics. This is Peter Whitney, the Pope was wrong publicly. He's a person who wrote a book, Politics and the Church. They are the same. Because each of them, they keep people in ignorance. Is it the way they do it? Yes. And it may not be the way. So about Peter's weaknesses, Peter was messing up. So church and the political divide is still up today. We are talking about the weaknesses of the saints. Humble diaries. As we focus on Peter, we talk about Peter. Let me give you a profile like you would tell when they want to give you an award. Let us go to the antecedents of Peter. Even Jesus said, I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church. Peter the rock. Peter the foundation of the church. Peter the standard to measure Christianity in the Jews. That was the beginning of Peter. And when he became born again, he said, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Peter and stayed with him 15 days. When you get to somewhere, you want to see that those people who have repute, they want to measure standards. I saw none of the other apostles, only James the Lord's brother. So when we're talking about people who matter in the faith, the Pope matters, the private matters, the most, most reverend matter, the more. So you can see the unity. Now let us see the humble error. Peter's human error resulting from pressure. When you get to pressure of the people, he made him to be guilty of denying five doctrines. And I want to make sure the five doctrines that Peter run foul of. The first thing is the doctrine of unity of the church. Before some men came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they arrived, he began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid of those who belong to the circumcision. He was afraid of the powers that be. So he flouted the unity, the doctrine of the unity of the church. You can see how Peter was looking guilty. When I saw that they were deviating from the truth of the gospel, I told Peter in front of everyone, if you who are a Jew live like Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you compel Gentiles to live like Jews? He flouted the doctrine of the unity of the church. And in one of Paul's letter, Galatians 5, 6, in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor circumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expression itself in love. The next doctrine Peter flouted was the doctrine of justification by faith. Galatians 5, 15 and 16. We who are Jews by nature are not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by faith of, the, of Christ and not by works of the law. The last line says, for by the works of the law shall no man be justified. Peter wrong, far of that. Doctrine three, flouted. Doctrine of freedom from the law, Galatians 2.17. But if in our endeavor to be justified in Christ, we too were found to be sinners. Is Christ then a servant of sin? Peter broke the third law, the doctrine of faith, from doctrine of freedom from the law. And he said, you can see all these pegs, this scattered. Paul said, if I rebuild that which I have once destroyed, he destroyed the, the edifice of justification by works. Shall I start building again? That's what Peter flouted, freedom from the law. The fourth doctrine Peter flouted was the doctrine of all sufficiency of the indwelling of Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. For through the law, I have died to the law. So Galatians 2.19. The fifth, or the, the doctrine of sufficiency, that's Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. And it's no longer I that live, but Christ living in me. That the all sufficiency of indwelling of Christ, the one makes all. The, the fifth doctrine that Peter flouted is the doctrine of grace. The life I now live, I live by faith, by faith. That's 
in the Son of God who loved and gave himself. That's his grace. So just by following church politics, Peter has shown a witness of flouting five doctrines. Now let us see the saints humble, humble diary. You can see Jesus Christ on the cross. The world, life expiring from him. Our human error, they remind us that it is only in Christ that we are sufficient. First Timothy 1 15. This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them all. When you see us wearing our robes as if Jesus Christ has come back, we are struggling. Our human error, they remind us that it's only Christ that is sufficient. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. Saints on Budari. Let's now go to the Old Testament. Gifted men of God still have their low areas. You can see Elijah, who had the double portion of Elijah. When that woman came and grabbed his feet, and Jesus was shocking her out, Elijah said, leave her alone, for her life is bitter to her. And Yahweh has concealed it from me and has not told me, no matter how powerful, no matter how anointed you are, you are limited. Even see the Elijah who gave him double portion by trans, you know, by transfer. Elijah was saying, I've had enough, Lord. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. We have our law. It was when they just told him to come and eat. How about Paul? All those boasts did not show that he had humility. And even when we are talking about the physique, I was given a thorn in my flesh. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weaknesses. Thank God for weaknesses. If not, men of God will be so proud. We have even talked about men of God who are standing. How about those who are even obviously wrong? I call them unchristian ways of behavior. The Pharisees became Christians when Allah started in the church. They came from Judea and they now want to teach Christians how they should become Christians. And that is why the Council of Jerusalem, you can see this tree. One side of it is green, the other side is dry. So when the Council of Jerusalem letter was written, Acts 15, 24, since we have heard that some persons have gone out from us, they confess they are Jews, and troubled you with words, unsettling your minds, although we gave them no instruction. That it has just seemed good to us, having come to one accord, to choose men and send them to you, our beloved Barnabas and Saul and Paul, men who have risked their lives. Standards need to be set up. So you can then see when Jesus Christ was being crucified, see what he said. If they did these things in a green tree, what shall it be in the dry? So the saints diary, they excluded nothing. So when the counterfeit came, it was so easy to listen. So when Paul was still talking in this chapter of study in verse 4, he said, false brethren sneaked in to spy out our liberty in Christ and bring us into bondage. You know what they call Holy Gospel? See this one, I just come. They say, I just come. We don't even know. He does not yet know that we are the mining council. We are the one to approve that is internal. That, that's, I'm telling you now of the weaknesses of the church. False brethren. You can see the way they are well dressed to, 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 to call the shots. So the unchristian ways of behavior too give out the fake. We did not give in to them for a moment so that the truth of the gospel might be preserved. When you see a new convert coming to a church, sometimes they feel like running back. See this balloon. The saint is always called to self-evaluation by the day as a way out. Romans 12, 3. Do not think yourself more highly than you ought to think, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of God has given us, has given you. And 1 Corinthians 8, 2, if anybody thinks that he knows 
anything he knows nothing yet as he ought to know. First Peter 3, 15, one of the popular in your hearts, revive Christ as Lord. Always be ready to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. There is no over-Christianity. You are a Christian, full stop. Just explain what it is. You can see this rugged Jesus on the cross. When I see this one, I, 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 I shudder. Christianity or the saint's testimony is someone that has been crucified. Dead men don't talk. Have been crucified with Christ. That's the way he laid unconscious before he died. Have been crucified with Christ. So if dead men don't talk, what are you now saying? I'm, I amount to no, nobody. The life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who died for me. Any step taken outside faith will rapidly fill more pages in our Christian humble diary. When you, you can see this child, that's the way we are supposed to walk. He's seeing daddy and mommy, he doesn't want to care if there's a flood. We walk by faith, not by sight. Daddy said, I come, I will come. Jesus said, as you come, I will walk on water. That's the only way. So any step taken out of faith will show your weaknesses more. Galatians 2.12. When men came from James, when people came from Canterbury, when people came from the headquarters, and the and, and the, the, the two sides were there, then politics started. And that's what the Lord says. So in the time of Micah, in the prophets, Micah chapter 3, verse 5, when there was commercial or bread and butter ministry. Because bread and copper ministry can be dangerous. So the man of God is to pray for you. If he's a billionaire and gives you money, he will give you good prophecy. He said, that's what the Lord says. As for the prophet who lead my people astray, if one fits them, they proclaim peace. If he does not, they prepare to wage war. They will give you good prophecy if you give good envelope. Those are the saints' diary. Dangerous commercials in ministry. And God said, therefore, night shall be unto you, that you are not, you have no vision. You will be dark unto you, and you, are, you will not, be, and the sun shall go down, he was telling them. So, the saints humble diary, we are called to humility. Last week, I showed you this. I want to show it again. Study it for one minute. This is 110 years of Joseph in a profile. In our saints humble diary, we have world wilderness experience. He was at the peak in his father's house when he was dreaming. He crashed down. He was sold to slavery. I can see that sharp drop. He went to the desert of preparation. All of us in ministry have this desert experience. Nothing would seem to work. He was a slave. He was in the water being washed. Now dependent on Potiphar and the wife for bread. He was sent to prison, second betrayer. But his wife put her hand, her face on her. She had the second imprisonment. That's a desert experience. We all go through it, you know. Sometimes you, you start wondering, what have I done? What have I done? What is my offense? That was what David was saying about Saul. And that valley of wholeness, in fact, you are, you are better off in the valley in, in, in the desert preparation because you pray and fast more. The valley of identity was not in the palace. So, the humble diary puts us in a data experience when we are gasping for spiritual relevance. Now, the office challenge is humble us. Here we see 1 Corinthians 4 9. I think that God has exhibited us apostles as last of all, as last of all, like men sentenced to death, because we have become a spectacle to the world and to angels and to men. See what that bishop has done again. Everybody is criticizing you. You don't even know how to behave right. Now, I want us to study this table, the same sample diary. I call it correctional revelation. With subhead of situation, consequences of directive, action, or commanded or comments. Conversion of Pharisees brought Wahala. 
certain men came from the Pharisees. They have not believed, and the church landed into crisis. They are not telling people you have to you have to thank God. The president of Israel now he has he has formed one government with the opposition party. This is not the time to argue. Christ is in the church, and you now have mud slings. I call it mud slings and factions. Council of Jerusalem. They have to tell how you to behave. They didn't talk about psychology. Just don't eat animals with blood or strangled. Keep away from fornication. The second correctional revelation is that the converts, the now Paul, who is a convert, preaching Christ without fellowship for 14 years. How about he's preaching the wrong standards? The, con the owner of the church told Paul, go by revelation, go and talk to the uh, foundation members. We become humbled by Christ's directive. What is the comment? There should be no evangelical factions. Less by any means, I should run in vain. There should be no evangelical factions. If you are born again, I'm born again. And we are facing different directions. There's something wrong with us, not Christ. The third correction is Jesus' long prayer and unity that they may be one. As you, Father, I, me, and I in them, God is not divided. Today, I don't know how many denominations exist in the world. <clears throat> this correctional revelation, when you see naked, two naked giants fighting, James and Peter and John and Paul pointing at the figures of Egypt, those are two giants you know, fighting naked in, 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 the, in the market square. And the consequences, you need certified testimony. You now say, okay, you'll be preaching to the Jews, we'll be preaching to the Gentiles. The comment is that confirmation of our calling should key to what, when Paul called Jesus, when God called Paul, he said he was sending him to the Gentiles, to whom I send you, so that everything now should appear as if it's coincidental. No, God is not the God of confusion. The fifth correctional revelation, and that is the polluted Christian fellowship. When the Pope is not behaving well, and everybody wants to wants to wants to mimic the Pope, well, of course everybody will become a Confucianist or a pretender. So when there is corporate flaw, F L A W or fellowship, don't give time, don't give a place to the devil. The work of the devil is to scatter you. And we need courage in leadership. Hey, you can tell me again. You need courage. You are always lonely as a leader. You are you are lonely. He said before some people came from James, Peter, Ed, Ed with Gentiles. When they came from Jerusalem, he separated from them. So Peter has become a pretender. And that is the Pope. That is the primate. That is the archbishop. So the sixth thing is ministry audits. See Joshua. Paul, God, God, God was right when he told Peter, when he told Moses how to choose. He did not put all the power in, in the hand of Joshua. He said, you will, Joshua will stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of human and freedom. He said, God can, he was not Joshua who saw an angel. Are you for us of this, of our enemy? In God's wisdom, we need we need ministry audits. Everybody does not have all the power. And survival in ministry is through team efforts. The leader does not see all the vision. He does not preach all the gospel. He does not do all the administration. It's a teamwork. And that's what Jesus Christ was telling his disciples. We'll be telling that next week. Watch and pray that we, the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak. We need a teamwork. The ministry is not the Shadir and Shami. He is not a magician where the leader does it all. The seventh point is that Paul, the scholar, the act, Paul's scholarship on Archiscopacy, he was the one who to write most of the Bible. Peter was just the bishop to be confirming. And when Peter was referring to Paul, see what he said in 2 Peter 6, 16, he said, and also in all his, his epistles, he was writing to Paul, speaking in them of these things, 
in which are some things hard to under to be understood. Even Peter said this man is too easy. His scholarship is too much. Some of his writing, you don't even understand much. It's too deep. And that was Peter. He was assigned to write scriptures, even in prison. He wrote most of them. We have different talents. We have different office callings. We have different assignments. No one should envy the other. Or no one should run the other one down because he's not doing like him. So for our office, our office challenges, they humble us. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I don't know. And that everybody has a gift. Everybody has an assignment. Our memory verse, as I close for discussion, Galatians 2.14. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them, oh, if you do a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you compel Gentiles to live like Jews? 